Hello, this is Mrs. Jones, and I am here for my junior level students. Uh, let's talk about what we're doing this week. Here it is. All right, so if you go to modules, you will see that the last lesson for module six is open. Uh, the last lesson before uh, the final project for this module. And uh, module six, lesson four. Okay, if you click on 6.4.0, this is where you're going to familiarize with our learning goals and our expectations for this lesson. Uh, you guys are going to answer this question for me. How can text be synthesized within an essay to support a claim about a theme? And you're going to do this by developing a claim that discusses the theme that unfolds over the course of several texts. Uh, you're going to be able to make that into a strong claim, <laughs> obviously. Uh, you'll be able to find the best evidence to support your claim and the best reasoning that explains all of the connections that you find in the work. If you're curious about the Common Core State Standards we're looking at, they're listed here for you. Now this first presentation basically goes over writing a synthesis argument essay using this handy dandy cheat sheet down here, the synthesis argument template. And so I'm not going to go through this presentation. I will go through it in class, um, but you guys working at home, uh, you can just as easily navigate through these slides here. And what it's going to tell you is it's going to tell you how you build a three paragraph essay, an introduction, a body and a conclusion uh, using this handy dandy chart here. All right. It's all fill in the blank. Okay. The directions for, are for you right here. So with your introduction, you would f first write a hook. And remember that your hook is your attention grabber. This is where uh, you present, uh, this is where you really get your, your reader's attention and, and make them interested in what you have to say. And, you know, you want to motivate them to continue reading your essay. So that's where you do it. And you can do this by, you know, using a big idea, maybe using a quote from an influential figure. Uh, maybe you can use a quote from one of the texts, an anecdote, maybe something personal, uh, an interesting fact. And so that's where you would put it. Then you'd come in and you'd add in some background information. So tell me which two works you're going to focus on in this essay, which two works are going to help you support your claim, because you're going to make your main claim right here for the thesis. You put your thesis statement here and your thesis statement is your big idea. It is one sentence that has your main claim, which is going to be a theme. Okay. You need to find the theme in two separate works. You need to look at these two separate works and tell me how they find how they share the same theme, how they share the same message. Um, and so uh, you'll write that down there. Now you'll go through this like any other basic CER ER chart. We've done these before. I pretty much beat you guys upside the head with this. Um, only that when we're doing synthesis papers, you do need to do it a little different. Um, so with your body paragraph, of course, like always, you're going to make a claim, but just make sure that your claim supports your thesis up here. Okay. Your claim needs to be about the theme of those two works. All right, and the two pieces of evidence here, all I need are two. You can use direct quotes or you can paraphrase. But what I want you to do is I, I want you to pull a quote from the speech that we're about to talk about and then also pull supporting evidence from any of the other works that we've done in this module thus far. All right, and what you're going to do is you're going to tell me you're going to paraphrase a quote. This works just the same as the same mean matter charts that we've been working on. Okay, and the evidence part you're going to tell me what the evidence says. You can do this with a, by just pulling a direct quote from the source or putting the quote in your own words by paraphrasing it. You'll put that in the evidence box. Your first bit of reasoning. Okay. This is think about the same mean matter chart. This is where you tell me what the quote means. What does the quote say? Okay. Explain the quote to me in different words. And then for the last piece of reasoning, you're going to tell me why it matters. And you're going to tell me specifically why it matters to the claim that you're making above here to your thesis. Why does it matter to the claim that you're making for your body paragraph? They need to all connect here. Okay. And so filling out a say mean matter chart is really crucial for you guys to do well on this assignment. Um, it, it would definitely benefit you. And you can just copy and paste what you write down in your say mean matter charts here for your evidence and for your reasoning. Okay, but you're not just going to do that once. You're actually going to find two pieces of evidence. So you'll find a piece of evidence for your, uh, your first source, and then you'll find a new piece of evidence. You can pull a direct quote or you can paraphrase from the second source. Uh, so you'll 
put down the quote, tell me what the quote means, and then tell me why it matters. And then when you're done with your body paragraph, you'll wrap it up in a concluding sentence that is like a reflection of your main claim, and then you'll work on the conclusion. Now conclusions are pretty easy, and if you follow this formula, it'll be even easier. So what you'll do is you'll restate the thesis that you put up here at the top, okay, your main claim. You'll restate your thesis, you'll say it in different words. Then you'll write a summary about how your evidence works to support your main claim. Okay, looking at these two works, you know, this supports my claim, yada, 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 yada. You guys fill in the blank. Um, you want to basically summarize the highlights of your essay, the important parts that you want to remind your readers about in order to really drive your point home. And then lastly, at the end here, what you're going to do is you're going to write a closure, closing statement here, a closure statement. And this is just a way to wrap up your, your essay, give it an air of finality, you know, really drive your point home, and, you know, try to be an effective writer here. So when you're done, what you'll do is you'll copy and paste each of these sentences in these boxes in order. You'll put them down here with, where it says synthesis argument template <laughs> in this empty box. And then you'll find that you have a strong, valuable synthesis three-paragraph essay. And so if you go to the next page, this is where you're going to find the assignment instructions. And so what you're going to do is you're going to watch, if it ever loads, you're going to watch this video. And I want you guys to read the transcript as you watch the video. Yeah, it's another commencement speech. Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the famous basketball player, uh, he was invited to speak at the commencement ceremony at Drew College in 2016. And so, like any commencement speech that we've watched in this class before or that you'll find anywhere else, he's going to be talking about topics like hope and dreams and future aspirations. But what you need to do is you need to familiarize with the speech. I want you guys to read and annotate as you listen to it. And you're going to determine the common theme that is related to the American dream between this speech by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with one of the texts that we've read in this module. So those texts include Who Burns for the Perfection of Paper by Martin Espada, the excerpt from A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry. Do you guys remember the, the, the drama? We have the two Langston Hughes poems, I Too and Let America Be America Again. And then we also have that essay by Kisi Onoda, uh, Growing Up Asian in America. And so just pick one of these. But if you want to be extra, if you add, want to add in a third piece of evidence to support your position, you can. And if you choose to do a third piece of evidence, you can also refer to any of the photos that we analyzed uh, in lesson two, if that's what you want. Um, okay, but you can't just use the photos. Okay, if you're only going to be using two sources, if you're only going to be using two pieces of evidence, um, you have to pick one of the written uh, documents that we read in this module. Okay, so yeah, you're going to look for a common theme between those two works that's related to the American dream. You're going to fill out a say, mean, matter chart for it. And then you're also going to fill out that synthesis argument template that I just showed you earlier, okay? So in class, I'll work through this with you. I'll help you along. Of course, if you guys have any questions, you know how to reach me. Oh, and at the end of the, this lesson, there is a discussion, a brief one. And I want you guys to reflect on what you've learned in this module so far. And so the prompt asks, how are hope and sacrifice connected to the American dream? Include at least one idea from the text you read uh, in this lesson in your response. So all I'm asking is that you respond to the prompt and you respond to one other student in this discussion. And that will be it for this week. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a good week and I look forward to learning with you. And I look forward to seeing you guys in person. Uh, for those of you who are choosing to come back onto campus on Wednesday, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Remember that I, I'm in room 28, so don't get lost. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.